Okay. Okay. We're live. Hi, everyone. All right. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for joining us tonight. We're really excited to launch this week of um, Facebook Live sessions and give you some information on Gervais Syndrome Foundation and our different Hi, programs and initiatives. So tonight you have myself, Marianne Meskus, who's the executive director, um, as well as Wendy Fry, who is our family and caregiver director. And um, we're going to give you a little bit of an overview of our programs, our history, and a little bit about Gervais syndrome. So I know that we probably have a lot of um, extended family members or friends who are joining us. So to give you a little bit of background on what Gervais syndrome is, um, you know, I'm not sure. I'm sorry, I can't see my slides here, okay. but... Great, so Dravet syndrome is a rare form of epilepsy and it begins in inf infancy, um, you know, along with the initial seizures, it is a lifelong condition and there's a lot of comorbidities that can impact the overall quality of the patient's life. Um, Dravet syndrome is considered a rare disease and what that means is there's less than 200,000 people that suffer from that syndrome. Our incidence rate is roughly one in 16,000 to one in 20,000. And if you're looking for uh, um, more details, whether it be on genetics or diagnosis or best care practices, you can find a great deal of information on our website. And we have the website address uh, listed there on the bottom of the slide if you wanna take a look. Um, quite frequently, families are trying to understand what causes Dravet syndrome. Usually the child is born healthy, a typical infant, no other health problems. And so families are overwhelmed when they begin to have seizures. Um, for most of our families, this is still considered a clinical diagnosis, which means that they meet the clinical criteria as far as seizure onset, seizure types, the progress progression of the disease. But um, in recent years with genetic testing available, we're seeing that 80% or more of our patients will also test positive for a mutation of the SCN1A gene. Um, knowing this is beneficial for our community because it allows us the opportunity to look at different ways to treat the syndrome since we understand the mechanism. And we certainly have a lot of hope that in the future we might be able to explore genetic therapies because we know what causes the syndrome. Um, you can see on the slide here that there is a kind of a large range as far as the severity of Gervais syndrome. So um, if you have an SCN1A mutation, you can range anywhere from having uh, hemiplegic migraines all the way to having Gervais syndrome, which falls on the more severe end of the spectrum. So you know, one of the things that's also difficult for our families is that once your child starts having seizures, there's a lot of other issues. So this is a very complex disease. It requires a lot of coordination of care. So after the initial seizure happens, you know, frequently it, the first one will be with an illness and a fever. Um, it can Hold be prolonged. On, I got Whoops. a comment that said there's no sound. Um, oh, no. And I just want to make sure that we are being heard. So give me one second to talk. Okay. Thank you guys for being patient. If you can hear us, please comment that you can. Um, just looking for the audio settings. Um, hmm. Should be. Oh, Misty says she can hear us. Okay. I think oh, we yeah. should be okay then. So we'll just pop back it up. Thank you so much, guys, for your patience while we figure that out. And sorry, I'm not sure where I left off, but I was talking a little bit about disease onset and progression. So, you know, for our, for our kids, after they start having the seizures, um, typically that first seizure will be with an illness, where which is accompanied by a fever. Uh, most of our patients have prolonged seizures early on, either the first or within that first year of starting seizures. And then in the second year of life, they'll start having seizures with or without fever, and they also begin to experience multiple seizure types. Um, one of the difficult things for our families is that they get this diagnosis and they talk to their neurologist about what their treatment options are. These options are extremely limited. Um, the options that are available don't work for every patient. And you know, quite frequently, we end up using our children you know, to the extent like a guinea pig, trying out different things and different ratios to see what works best for them. So, you know, because of that, as well as the constant care of these patients, there is a significant impact on the entire family, parents and siblings as well. Um, yeah, as I had mentioned, it is a complex disorder. So along with the seizures, as the child progresses, we begin to see other health issues. And these include developmental delays, behavior issues, problems with gait and movement. Um, a lot of our children have dysautonomia. And what that means is that they experience disruptions of the autonomic nervous system. 
And so they have issues regulating their temperature, their heart rate, or their blood pressure. So it's, it's really a lot to manage for a family. And frequently our families see multiple specialists and try to get them to work in tandem to assure that they're offering the best quality of life for the patient. So um, I know this is a really brief overview. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer those now. Of course, there's a lot of information on our website and you're always welcome to reach out to any of our team members uh, with any questions that you have. So to give you a little bit of background on the history of the Gervais Syndrome Foundation, um, I think it's really important to recognize that it's been built by the community and for the community. So we're the ones who know what our needs are, what our loved ones need, and that allows us to prioritize them and make sure that positive things are happening that move the needle forward for better treatments and, and hopefully soon one day a cure. Um, you can see from our mission statement, you know, our, our primary goal has always been to raise money for research. And then of course, we wanna make sure that we're increasing awareness of the syndrome and most importantly, I think, is making sure that our families have the support that they need. Um, DSF was founded back in 2009, and several parents had come together, and we were all very frustrated because we were looking at what research was out there, and we quickly realized that when you're talking about epilepsy, or I'm sorry, funding for epilepsy research in general, the numbers are significantly lower than other diseases. So by the time you funnel that down, to something rare like Gervais syndrome, there was just no research happening. So we realized that if we wanted to find better ans answers or other treatments for our children, that we were going to have to do something about it. So um, it was started by four parents and I was fortunate, fortunate to be one of them. There was also Lori O'Driscoll, Amanda Renz and Janice Stanley. And our initial goal, which seemed overwhelming at the time, was to try to raise $100,000 to fund a single grant and other families were so motivated and moved that because of that community support, we were able to raise that in less than a year. Um, again, knowing that research was kind of everybody's primary focus, we decided that you know we were just gonna move forward with the organization and see what happened. And since 2009, we've been fortunate to award over $4.2 million in research grants and over $150,000 in patient assistance grants. And in 2018 alone, our community raised over $2 million for our current programs as well as future research. And the reason these changes are happening is because our community has come together and said, this is what's important to us. You know, we wanna find those answers for our loved ones and we're gonna do whatever it takes. Um, one of the other things that I had wanted to mention and on Wednesday, Nicole is going to give uh, a, a talk on current research and, and upcoming things that we can look forward to. And this spring, we were able to put out a request for proposals at, um, looking at genetic approaches to treatment for Gervais. And we have made an award, and she'll be announcing that on Wednesday. If you miss Wednesday's presentation and you want to learn more about it, it will be up on our website later this week. So one of the things um, when the organization was started and we realized you know, funds are very difficult to raise, we wanted to make sure that we can set in place a, a financial matrix and make sure that we were very fiscally responsible with the gifts that we did get. Um, we set up a, a lot of parameters that help us decide what we're going to fund, what we're going to spend our money on, and we take the steward stewardship of these funds that come from our donors very seriously. So if you've been on our website and made a donation, you may have seen this uh, picture that is on the donation page. Each year we do have our finances audited so that there's a, a clear transparency of where our funds go and what we prioritize. Um, we're very excited to see that over 40% of our funds raised in 2018 went towards research. And if you were to look at other charities and either their 990s or their audited financial statements, you would see that you're kind of hard pressed to find operating funds that are maintained at such a low percentage. Um, this is really in large part because all of our volunteers and even our staff members have a child with Gervais syndrome or they've lost a child to the syndrome. And so this is really personal for us. And so our goal is, you know, what can we do in the fastest amount of time to help our loved ones? Um, we are really proud of the fact that on GuideStar, which is a website that ranks charities that we hold their highest level, which is uh, considered a platinum level for transparency. And we make sure that all of our financial data Data is readily available on our website. So um, for anyone who wants to donate, they can really see how their gift is going to be used. So with that, I will go ahead and introduce Wendy and let her tell you a little bit about our staff and our volunteers. Sure. 
Um, and also, thank you to everyone who's watching. I know we've got <clears throat> a few of our staff members um, watching, and we have um, some parent ambassadors on the line. Um, our community, as Marianne said, is very involved, and most of us, if not all of us, have a child or a relative with Dravet syndrome. Um, so we see this day in and day out, and we're very inspired to keep working hard um, for a better life for these people in our lives. So um, our executive director is Mary Ann, right next to me. Um, she, uh, again, was one of our founding members. Uh, we also have Jamie Cohen, who I believe tomorrow... Uh, Jamie will be joining me and we'll be talking about some of the programs. She's our accountant and also our program director. Um, and so we'll be going into a little more depth on some of the resources that are available for families. Um, Misty Reed is our campaign director and she's the fundraiser, um, the lead fundraiser of our organization. She oversees all of our fundraising efforts. So if you ever have questions or ideas for how you want to get involved, she's the one to go to for that. Um, I um, am Wendy and I am the FACE director, which is Family and Caregiver Engagement. So I help do things like this and um, I help with our ambassador program and some other family support things and we'll go into some of the programs a little later. And then Jenny um, joined us recently and she's our administrative coordinator. Also, we're all Dervay moms and um, we're all very involved and excited to be a part of the organization and we feel very passionately about the work that we do. Um, we also have our board. Um, again, all of our board members are parents or have uh, lost a child to Dervay syndrome and we have newly a grandparent. So we've got Nicole Villas, who's our president and scientific director. She'll be joining us Wednesday to talk about more research with Gervais syndrome. Uh, Kate Hintz, who is our secretary. Tim Wood, who's our treasurer. Jenny Tischer, who's our bereavement and grief specialist. Um, Michelle, who's our marketing and web consultant. And then Ted, who is our newest board member and a grandfather to Gervais child, and then our director, and Meridai, of course, as well, um, and some of our founders. Um, we have an amazing team of parent ambassadors, and I'm going to um, see if I can switch the view here because you can't see. Oh, no. I don't know if I can do it. Sorry for those whose names got cut off a little. Um, so Beth, Jenny, they're in the Northeast, and I'm also in the Northeast. Uh, Kim really and uh, Steve and Shannon are in the Southeast. Uh, Bob and Kathy, uh, they'll actually be joining us on Sunday. They have an adult child with Gervais syndrome, and they'll be talking about um, the unique challenges of um, having an adult with Gervais syndrome as well as transitioning into adulthood and the work that they've done to make that transition smoother. Um, and along with Tina and Mandy, are they're in the Midwest. Uh, Shauna Lynn and Gloria are in our mountain region. They're all actually all in Texas. Um, but it's part of the mountain region. And then we have Karen, Aaron, and Morgan on the West Coast. So we have a team of amazing, all parents of children with Gervais syndrome or adults with Gervais syndrome who are very involved um, with our organization. And if they're on the line, um, you'll see their names. You can always reach out to them and ask them questions. So I'm going to pass it back to Marianne to talk a little more about our research programs. Um, yeah, great. And I just wanted to add on to that, too. Um, even though we shared all of those volunteers with you, there are a lot of other people behind the scenes that weren't included in there because it would take us so long to, to list them all. But for instance, we have a wonderful adult advisory board who helps us um, kind of look at what the needs of care are and the gaps in care for our adult patients, which has um, been a really difficult topic for us to address. So we're thankful for everybody out there who helps us. But um, to give you a little bit of an overview of our research programs, uh, as we had mentioned earlier, Nicole Villas will be on on Wednesday and she'll give a much stronger overview as well as an update on the research programs that we funded last year and this new pro the new uh, grant that I mentioned earlier. But since um, our first grant award in 2010, we've been able to award over $4.2 million to 39 different Dravet specific projects, which is an incredible feat in such a short period of time. 
And as I had said, we had started, that was our focus. You know, we really wanted to fund research and encourage researchers to look at Gervais and try to better understand it and find better answers for us. And to this day, it remains a top priority for us. So we have three different arms of our grant programs, um, and there's very specific reasons why we have them, you know, divided up. We we started the program with just research grant awards, and our goal with these awards was to be able to offer a smaller amount of money that would allow scientists to explore their hypotheses and gather some initial data that then they could perhaps use for larger grant funding from, say, the National Institutes of Health. And we really felt that by offering this seed money type of grant, um, along with allowing them to test their initial ideas, it would draw them into the field of Dervais syndrome, knowing that there was support available, that there was a community that wanted to find answers. Um, and then as the organization continued to grow, we recognized that it was really important to draw in young investigators. And that was when we began to offer our postdoctoral fellowships. And so this is one year of support. And our hope there is that when we offer this the smaller amount of money to these postdoctoral fellows is that that will kind of spark their interest in Dravet syndrome and get them focused on that for their entire research career. And then most recently, we offered um, a clinician researcher award because we recognize that there's a lot of, of clinical issues that need to be addressed and, and that's not happening. And so we hope by adding this new award, it's, it's only a year old, that we'll get more clinicians interested in Dravet syndrome and kind of exploring some of the comorbidities and things that might help families cope on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and then this year, we were fortunate because of all the funds we raised, as I had mentioned, we had done that special request for proposals. And this one was specifically on genetic approaches. And um, we were very excited about some of the grants that came in and we were very happy to fund one of them. And as I said, Nicole will give more information on Wednesday. Uh, one of the other things that we recognized early on that was important was to give our researchers as well as our clinicians an opportunity to gather together and spend some time thinking about Dravet syndrome, talking about what the current research was, and also looking ahead, like what would be beneficial, whether it was for us to fund as an organization or for us to try to find researchers who were interested. So as a result, we started our annual research roundtable. We host it each year before the start of the American Epilepsy Society meeting, and we're really excited that this year will, will be our, our 10th year in doing that, and it has grown tremendously over the years. It isn't a meeting that's by invite only, and it really only goes out to people who are specifically working in Dravet syndrome, and so it's been exciting to see that meeting grow from about you know, 20, 25 people to about 120 people in just that short period of time. So. I, I would hope, I mean, that's something that certainly brings me some comfort is knowing that there are these really great minds working on this and that that community and that they just continues to spread and get larger. So I, I do think there's a lot of hope there in, in the research area. But I will let uh, Wendy talk about connecting our community. Sure. So as I mentioned earlier, <coughs> excuse me, my role is family and caregiver engagement. So connecting our community is a big part of that. Um, and as it says here, over the years, we've worked hard to connect all the community stakeholders um, from the families to the clinicians to researchers to industry. And they're all very different, you know, pieces of the puzzle. So putting it all together is not easy. Um, so um, I'm just going to back up here. So at first... Um, we started with our advisory board. So our scientific advisory board and medical advisory board, um, they are how we get input from the scientific community and from the clinician community to kind of merge everything together. And most of the names that you see on this list, um, you'll recognize if you are a caregiver or a family member of a caregiver, your uh, loved one with Gervais probably sees one of these people as their doctors. Um, and that this is why we're kind of lucky with Gervais syndrome because all of these clinicians care so deeply and are really involved with our efforts to move research forward. Um, and they've helped us to kind of mold the organization and the research strategy um, along the way. Um, um, so our strategic plan, um, in 2018, um, at the conference, we launched our strategic plan, and basically it outlined our goals for the upcoming five years based on input from all of these stakeholders in our community and 
to kind of define where do we want this organization to go and what impact we want to have on Gervais Syndrome. And so um, what's great about Gervais Syndrome Foundation is that over this time we've really had a clear vision. And as, you know, Marianne explained, um, you know, 10 years ago when the foundation began, uh, they had that clear vision of just one grant and it blew up so quickly. And I think having that clear vision is what keeps us moving forward. As a, you know, a mother of a younger child with Gervais syndrome, I can see how that work has really paid off over the years. Um, and it's really inspiring to me. Um, so our community programs, um, we do a lot of work. Obviously, research is what we want. We want a cure. We're all parents, and that's something that we really care about because every day we're living the struggles of Gervais syndrome. And, you know, even today, <laughs> we had kind of a crazy day in my house. And, you know, every day we're reminded of why this work is so important. So um, in addition to the research, in addition to that important work, we also know that it's important to advocate and we know that it's important to support the families because we're kind of in the battlefield still. So we have a lot of resources and throughout this week we'll talk more deeply. I'm ha happy to answer questions if anyone has questions on this specifically. Um, but through DSF you can get educational materials and brochures. We have on our website um, our brochures. We've recently translated them into Spanish and I know over, the t over time I've had um, educators and school counselors reach out to me uh, searching for resources. So we do have those available and we're happy to provide them. Um, we have our Find a Doctor page and I've helped some families navigate that over the past year um, to help find a Dravet specialized doctor in their area. It's especially in a more rural area, it can be really difficult to find a doctor uh, who even knows what Dravet syndrome is and um, it may be harder to get diagnosis or good treatment if you're not with a clinician who understands. Um, we also newly, I want to say in the last three months, uh, released our Comprehensive Care Centers page. So on our website, um, if you look under the Gervais tab, I believe, what is Gervais syndrome? It'll say Comprehensive Care Centers. And those are a list of hospitals that we know are experienced in treating Gervais syndrome and not only have a um, neurologist who understands Gervais syndrome, but they have a team of professionals who can help with the needs of Gervais, which are unique and spread beyond neurology. So um, we know that these hospitals, if you take your child there, you'll most likely receive the best care. Um, we also have our family network and um, along with Jenny who helps me administrate the family network, we have this network and basically we use it as a way to connect families. So um, anyone can register for the Gervais family network. Basically it just tells us where you are and the about the Dravet patient in your life. And as, um, as more families enroll, when a new family signs up, they might be, they might say, you know, I'm in Ohio. Somebody said they're watching from Ohio. I'm in Ohio and I want to know if there's another Dravet family near me. So I can then reach out to that family and put these families in touch if everyone wants to be put in touch and more often than not everybody does because it's so unique. Um, so having that tool to connect families over time has really helped to grow our community exponentially in the last couple of years. I think it was 2017 when we launched it and I've been lucky enough to watch lots of families connect over the years thanks to the Family Network. Um, we have support groups, and because we are also geographically spread thin, our support groups are virtual. Um, we do have six different support groups on Facebook. We have um, our main support group, which is international. We have five regional support groups throughout the U.S., and then we have one that is specifically for adults and caregivers who have, um, or caregivers of adults, rather, with Gervais syndrome. Um, so all of these groups are unique and they meet the needs of a specific um, region or a specific need um, and they're probably the best place to get advice from other parents, especially when you're newly diagnosed. Um, you'll see in our support group minute by minute support. Um, you could be, you know, in the ambulance on the way to the emergency room and ask a question and get an answer. 
Um, and I know when you're y when you have a young one with Gervais, that is really really important to have that support. Obviously, it's not medical advice, but it's just the support that you need when you really can't find it anywhere else. And then newest on this list um, is Caregiver Connect, and uh, Caregiver Connect is um, a program that we're putting out later this year, or early 2020, right? Correct. Yep. And um, it'll be an educational program to help, or no, this one is, sorry, Caregiver Connect is where you can apply for a grant and um, <laughs> you'll be awarded um, funds to help put together a um, in-person event where uh, caregivers can connect. So it's Again, because we're spread so geographically thin, it's really challenging for families to meet up. So this is a way for us to help make that possible. Um, we know that it can be a challenge to find space that can accommodate the needs of, you know, Gervais syndrome families. Um, so this is a way to help do that. So um, <clears throat> educational opportunities. This is one of my favorite things as a former teacher. <clears throat> we have our Day of Gervais conferences. Um, I joke, this is when we go on tour. So um, in the fall, every year we do um, one day sort of like mini conferences all across the country. And um, if you've been to a Day of Gervais, go ahead and drop a comment and let us know what you thought of it. Um, so there are one day mini conferences. We have some professional speakers. We do some caregiver support as well. Um, and it's just a great experience. And one of the other parts of it is um, running tandem to the conference for parents and caregivers. We run a sibling uh, camp that day. And so it's a great way for the siblings to connect with other siblings in that region. And then um, we also, because it's a family com conference, it's not a professional conference, None of these sessions are recorded for educational purposes or anything, so we welcome you to bring your Gervais patient with you, your children with you. So um, we really want to limit the um, we want to eliminate the limitations. <laughs> it's a weird way to say that of attending this event, and we want to make it really accessible for everybody, so that you know childcare isn't an issue, and that everyone has a place to be in that in that space. And it really is a wonderful time. And then we have our um, 2020 conference will be coming up in June of 2020. And um, every other year we have a, a professional and parent conference um, to uh, provide, you know, education to neurologists and clinicians who see patients with Gervais, but also, and, you know, research updates and all different uh, educational sessions on Gervais syndrome. And we also invite parents to participate and um, come to this meeting. So it's a really wonderful, unique experience. And I know everyone has a million wonderful things to say about the conference. Um, so you can definitely, you can see videos from previous conferences on our YouTube channel or on our website. And um, they're really wonderful to watch, you know, if you're ever looking for more information or just want to, you know, know more about your bay. And actually, Friday and Saturday, we'll have some viewing parties on Facebook where we'll um, watch some of the best sessions from uh, the conference in 2018. Um, one about siblings and then one about um, Gervais syndrome um, overview. So um, again, a little more in Caregiver Connect. So um, it's our program in partnership with Greenwich and um, we're gonna be providing these uh, grants to help Caregivers Connect, but also some educational programming to help um, manage um, you know, the anxiety. We realize that stress and caregiver burden is a huge issue for the community. So this is our um, our first big attempt at tackling that problem, and we're doing it thanks to this partnership with Greenwich. Um, and new programs that are a part of it, I talked a little bit about the Connect Grants where you can connect with families. The Birthday Buddies Club is a new thing that we're really excited about. Um, you can sign up and your Dervais child will receive a special treat for their birthday month um, in the mail. So uh, all that information is on our website and we'll be posting it, um, you know, periodically reminders and information on how to sign up. So if you have any questions, feel free. We can also drop that information in the comments as well. 
um, Dravet Dialogues is similar to what we're doing right now. We've been launching some virtual support groups, again, because our um, patient base and the caregivers are spread so geographically thin. It's hard for anyone to go to an in-person support group. And honestly, even if you could go to an in-person support group, trying to get out of the house when you're a Gervais parent is nearly impossible sometimes, unless you're really lucky and have lots of help. Um, it's, it's really difficult to do. So this is our way of meeting the needs of that the caregiver population by providing this support group, um, this live session where parents can discuss issues um, in our support groups. So uh, that's something new. And then peer-to-peer -peer support, we're actually um, starting to provide and put together some training for our parent ambassadors so that they will, most of our parent ambassadors, they're already rock star, you know, supports for peers and that's why they're in that role. Um, but we're putting together some official programming to train them on how to, um, you know, provide the best support for each other and for themselves so that they can be excellent peer supports. Um, so this is something that we hope to grow over time. Um, and again, all of these things are to help meet those caregiver burden needs that are really, really severe. Uh, we recognize that, you know, post-traumatic stress, chronic traumatic stress, these are things that are really important that we need to address with our caregiver community. Um, and then, again, this Caregiver Connect program is going to... Um, so, Marianne, why don't you chime in and talk a little more about this specific part of it with the videos and the workbooks? <laughs> sure. So this will be coming, um, we, we anticipate the first videos will come out in January of 2020, and it's going to be a series of six videos that addresses all of these, you know, caregiver issues and the stress and the burden we carry. Um, and I think it's also very unique because in tandem with that, we're also going to have workbooks available that is go that are going to give families the opportunity you know, to write down some of their thoughts and ideas as well as have helpful advice on how to to manage the stress and this burden that they carry on a daily basis. Um, I don't think people realize, you know, if they hear that your child has seizures, they think that otherwise they're okay and they don't realize how much pressure we're under every day, how frequently our ch children seize, how often they're in the hospital. And um, our families really need this outlet. And as Wendy mentioned, even if you're fortunate enough to have some type of caregiver uh, support group near you, you can't always gauge whether or not you'll actually be able to attend because it will depend on how your child is doing or how that day has gone. So with these videos, they will be permanently archived on our website so that caregivers can watch them at any time that works for them. But in addition to that, there will also be um, a series of virtual smaller support groups that you can sign up for. And so they each of those support groups will be focused on one of the videos and we'll have somebody leading the group that can um, let folks talk through their feelings, the issues they're having and allow others to chime in with things that have worked for them. So we're really excited about this. Um, along with working with Greenwich on this, we're working with an expert in um, pediatric traumatic stress who's based out of Children's Hospital of Philadelphia or CHOP. Her name is Dr. Nancy Kasim Adams, and she has done a development of a lot of these programs in the past, but this is the first time she's doing anything virtually. So we're really excited to see what comes from this. And we also recognize that it's not just our families with Dravet syndrome, but also all the rare epilepsies that struggle with this. So we're going to make sure it's designed in a way that we can share it with, with others who are in a similar position and allow their, their parent groups to take advantage of setting up a similar program by using our videos and our workbooks. So... Thank you. Yeah, we have yeah. so many new programs coming up. It's so exciting. There's just like, we really want to make sure we're meeting this support need as in as many ways as we can. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. So getting involved, that is the number one way. So, so it's a conversation that I had with some families in Seattle at Day of Gervais, we were talking about, you know, Gervais Syndrome Foundation and it's, you know, it sort of felt like it was like, well, why can't you do this? And why, like, we want you to do this. And it, I had this moment where I thought, you know, but we are, we're all Gervais Foundation because we're all, our, our organization is parents of kids with Gervais, right? So, you know, no matter the age of your child with Gervais, no matter, you know, what stage of this, you know, process you're in, 
we're all, that's our organization is you. We're, we're comprised of parents. And so your voice matters. And, you know, whatever programming we're doing, it's a direct reflection of whatever the community needs and has voice to us. Um, so we're, we're happy to do this for you. And this work, uh, again, we just feel so passionately about it. So um, for you, for your patient and how, how you can be involved, we want to make sure that you're aware of what the research says and what the treatment is. We've got our treatment consensus. We've got all sorts of different resources out there to make sure that you know you're getting proper diagnosis. You know how to get a diagnosis. If you need genetic testing, you can get that. If you need, you know, we want to make sure everybody knows where to go, what to do, so that baseline you're getting the best care that you can. Um, and it's really important that you know where to look for that, that you know where the doctors are and you know where to go and where to turn for that information. Because with the Internet, it's so hard to, you know, you read so many different things. We want to make sure you're getting accurate information. Um, it, it's important also to know about clinical trials and when they're happening and how you can vent, get involved or when you might want to get involved. Um, and, you know, you may be at a point where you, you know, you need that access and if you don't have the information of how to get involved um, it can really be unfortunate for your treatment for your child's treatment so having all that information in hand being educated about what's going on it's super important for the best care for your loved one we also want to make sure that everybody knows how to support you and how, that you have you know the tools and the resources so all these different things we talked about about caregiver burning, caregiver stress, those are all important pieces of the puzzle of keeping that family unit supported. And siblings, like our sibling camp programs and our sibling resources, those are an important part of keeping this family unit supported. Um, and also just being able to talk to other families. Every Gervais parent you meet will say when they met another Gervais family for the first time, it was one of those monumental moments in their lives. Every one of us has that story, and every one of us, you know, we know all the – we feel like family with each other. And so, you know, that is such an important piece of this puzzle, and we want to make sure that everybody has it. Um, so that's something that we work for as an organization. For our community, we each bring a different perspective and voice. So it's important, as I said, you know, our programming and our work, it's a direct reflection of what the community needs. So we really value everybody's involvement, all of our volunteers' involvement, and everybody who works hard to make this organization work. Um, we care that you're involved and we want you to be involved. And um, it's important, you know, we're doing a lot with our patient center's outcome research grant to make sure that what we're doing is meets the needs of our patients and that, that that's the driving force of what our work is. Um, and it's also important, you know, for us to, to look professional and to collaborate with others in the community in a cohesive way. So, you know, it's important that we have that united front and we work together as a team um, and to have our vision. And I think, you know, when you look at our financial statements and everything, you can see our work and what we're putting our money into is a reflection of all of our values and how, you know, we're all really dedicated to this mission together. And um, one last thing is for our allies. So I think some of you watching may not be parents. Usually our audience is all parents, and um, that's because we're the ones in the battlefield. We're the ones living this day in and day out and looking for support because we need it. Um, but recently, we've noticed a lot of people reaching out aren't the parents. They're grandparents, aunts, uncles, they're friends or neighbors or community members who want to know more and want to help. So how can you do that? Well, obviously, all of the things that we've talked about, you can help support our programs, you can volunteer. But also just for the, the Gervais family in your community, check on them, make sure that they're okay because they're probably not. They could probably use a hug or a helping hand and just show up when, you know, when they do things, when they, you know, have fundraisers or advocacy events or, you know, show up for them. Make sure that they know that you're there and make adjustments when things aren't going well, um, you know, and, and they need to make adjustments to meet the needs of their Gervais patient. Be there with them and, and ask them how you can help and how you can be involved. 
and help them advocate because, you know, at the end of the day, none of this is going to happen if we don't work together to advocate beyond our community. So your support to us is so important. And, you know, we are just really thankful for all of the allies to our community and, you know, for their support. So sharing and showing, those are really important things, especially this month. It's Gervais Syndrome Awareness Month. This is why we're doing this. <coughs> so, you know, doing those things, showing that support, that's how our community not only knows that this work is is moving things forward, um, but it gives us hope that, you know, we can keep this mission going mm-hmm. for our kids. And I just wanted to echo, you know, some of what Wendy was saying. I, I can't stress how important your involvement is um, as a parent or as just, a, you know, a community member who wants to help. To give an example, Wendy mentioned her daughter is younger. My son is 19, and when he was diagnosed 15 years ago and you Google Gervais syndrome, there were only three hits. There was just no information available, nowhere to turn. And all of the things that are out there now, and I realize for newly diagnosed, it might not still feel like a lot, but there is so much that's available for our community now to help guide them through this journey, to help us find better treatments. Um, it is highly unusual for a rare disease to ever even get a treatment indicated for that disease. Last year, we had two indicated, both Epidiolex and Steropentol. We have a fenfluramine trial going on. We have um, the Ovid trial going on, and there are other things coming up in the pipeline. All of that is happening because of parental involvement and them making their voice known that they want these better treatments and they're willing to partner and they're willing to help and they're willing to come together with the organization um, as that unified voice and say, you know, we're here, how can we expedite things? So please join our email list, you know, please follow us on social media. If you have questions, reach out to us at any time. I mean, we all feel the urgency and the need to find find the better um, options that will improve the quality of life for our loved ones. So whatever you can do to it, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be involved on a daily basis, for instance, in the support group, but make sure you're signed up for the family network so that if we have an industry partner that says, I'm interested in doing a trial in Illinois, how many patient families do you have? We can say we have X number of families and we think that it's very feasible that you would be able to get enrollment. All of those little things really matter. So it's so important that you are part of that, that you are involved as much as you can be even if it's just making sure you're um, on the email list in the family network so that your your family is counted. So we still have, <clears throat> if there's anyone on the line who has any questions about um, Gervais syndrome or our programs, um, we're both Gervais moms. We're happy to, you know, talk for a couple minutes um, to answer your questions. I know we've made this um, public, which uh, typically when we do these support group videos that we call Gervais Dialogues, we make them private to our support group. Um, so, But we know that so many community members have had questions for us, and they want to learn more. So now is a great time if you have questions and um, you're curious about anything with Gervais syndrome, um, we can answer them. If not, we can always come back and answer in the comments as well. And we can link to some of the resources that we shared um, today. Um, Do you have anything else that you want to add, Marianne? I don't. We just appreciate everyone who tuned in today. We encourage you to watch any and all of the other sessions that are coming up. Um, There's a lot of great information that's going to be available. And we just feel it's really important that you understand where our focus is and um, if you see anything that you feel that we're missing or that would be helpful to overall quality of life for your patients, we want to hear those things. We're, we want to develop tools and programs and things that will really help our families. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll be back tomorrow at 8 o'clock, and um, we'll talk a little more about some of the ways that you can get support from the Gervais Foundation, um, like our patient assistance grant and some of those other things. So we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great night. Oh, Wendy? Yeah. Oh, I see. You, you have one question there. Ooh. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to let you take that one. So um, I don't have exact, uh, exact numbers on that, Stephen, but his question was, what are your fundraising goals for this year and how much has been met so far? And to give you a little bit of background on that, um, Misty, who is our fundraising campaign director, 
a lot of her initiatives take place starting about at this point in the year through the end of the year. So she does a lot of walks and races, and she'll be talking about that later this week. But usually um, through our events, as well as personal donations, we bring in about $1.2 million. That's a, a large part of our um, organization's funds. And I would say this year, only because we had an additional gala that we weren't anticipating, we're probably at about 60% of that goal. Which is awesome. Yep. It's wonderful. And of course, if we go above and beyond it, it just means there, there's the opportunity to fund an additional research grant or to add an additional program or to hold on to that money for things that we know are coming up in the future that would be beneficial. Great question, Stephen. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, again, we will Great. be on the line. So if anyone has any other questions, feel free um, and keep your eyes peeled for our sessions the rest of this week. And we'll see you later. Thanks. Thank you.